What's up, Lazy Dog fam? Hope everybody out there is having a spectacular day. We got some planting we need to get done today. It's, planting. It's not uh, as dry as I'd like it to be when we're planting, <laughs> but I think it might be as dry as it's going to get yeah. for the next few days. I thought it was going to be dry all day today and earlier. I mean, mm -hmm. sun shining like it is. We just had like a rogue shower for about mm -hmm. 20 minutes. So we're going to do our best to plant in some wet soil. We got some English peas we need to put in the ground. Okay. And we got our flower transplants in the greenhouse we need to put in the ground. We're going to be doing that all in this little plot behind us here. And um, should be fun. <laughs> Let's get dirty. Let's do it. So if you've been following along with our seed starting adventures, you know we had planned to grow some gourds on this little arch panel trellis this fall. But we haven't had good luck getting them to germinate. Then I thought about planting some cucumbers on there, but I waited too late to do that. And so now... I think we're just going to use it to grow some English peas. Now, English peas won't climb near as much as those butter beans did. They won't climb all the way to the top. They probably only get, you know, I don't know, three or four foot tall at the most there. But since we have this trellis in place here, we might as well use it. And so we're going to plant our English peas there. Still have some ochre going to seed at the end of that row there. And then we've got this blank spot here we can put our flower transplants in right here so our drip system is already hooked up we've got the main line there we just need to plug in a new line over there for those flower transplants and then right here i've got a line running to each side of this arch panel trellis or had a line running to each side you can see i pulled up the tape there so i could kind of cultivate and clean it up so first thing we need to do is get our drip lines down then we can start some planting. Now normally we use the wheel hoe to bury our drip tape and that's what we'll be using over there where there's not this arch panel in the way. But right here, I can't run a wheel hoe right alongside these posts here. So we're gonna have to do it by hand. So I got my little triangle hoe and what I'm gonna do is just kind of scratch out a little furrow so we can bury that drip tape, put it in that furrow and then we'll actually plant on both sides of it. So We'll just make us a little trench here, right alongside this guy. We won't bury it too deep, but uh, we'll get it in the ground. That way it stays in place and it's out of the way. You got a lot of help. Those a doggies. Lot of doggies yeah. <laughs> Look at there. <gasps> the chickens are gonna be so excited. Let me see. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. They're getting for you baked in the sun. <laughs> okay. All right. Now we're going to take our drip lines, which we left hooked up there, and make sure the emitters are facing up. Just going to lay them back down in here. It's a little long. Well, I had originally had it long enough to feed this oak tree right here. Yeah. But since we're letting it go to seed and not feeding it anymore. Are you going to cut it? Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll take my little row end off here. Okay. Let me get in close. Just to take that off. Yep. And then we'll get down here. Man, it's nice that you can get down there again. <laughs> Feels good. And we'll just okay and you bend it back yeah we'll just oh hold on i got a shadow let me pull back there we go all right looks good i'll we'll do that to the other one too okay okay row two emitters up how many times can you use this drip tape before it's no good it just depends you know sometimes we can get four or five uses out of it sometimes if it starts getting real leaky you know I don't think this has any leaks in it. We'll see. But, uh, you know, if I end up having three or four patches in a piece, I'll usually replace it. But um, So that's your sign, the leakiness. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's... I'll throw it away if it just starts leaking like crazy. I guess it just depends on how you store it. If you leave it in the sun and don't bury it like this, it's not going to last as long. Uh, I thought Probably you were just a lot, a lot of factors that go into. Uh, sorry, 
I was gonna say, I thought at first you were just being a hoarder by saving it all, but then I realized you could really reuse it. Yeah. Good to know. Oh, that one's got some junk in it. That looks real official right there. It'll work. All right, now we just need to take a rake and cover these up. You want me to do that? Actually, oh. no. No. We don't need that. Let's go ahead and lay our other two lines and turn the water on. Okay. Because these are a lot easier to bury once they're inflated and kind of straightened out. Okay. So let me go get the wheel hoe. We'll mark off our other two rows. We're going to put here not on the arch panel. Got it. So I'm pretty sure I only got enough flower transplants for one row here. These are about 30 foot long, but I think I got enough room there. I may go ahead and do another row of English peas, not on the arch panel where you, we'll use string or trellis netting or something to hold them up. But I feel like this space is too big for just one row. And uh, since we have English peas there, we'll do one more row of English peas. That way we'll have plenty. So we're just gonna eyeball this space in here, try to get them somewhat equal distance. got some of them okra roots in here and it's wet i was gonna offer to do this but now i'm really glad i didn't yeah that wet dirt's a little tougher a little heavier you would think it'd be easier to slice through it's not oh look at there what just don't i didn't plan this that's gonna work out just right see there all oh right. hold on let me get in I just got to pull that out. Look at there, lucky dog. You got yeah. an emitter right there at it. I had to punch a hole over there, but oh. I won't right there. <laughs> it's the little things in life that really get us pumped. That's right. All right, let's put some fertilizer in these furrows here. Okay. So we've been using that Nature Safe 855 to put in the furrows. Yeah, but we I'm just about, have enough. I'm about out of that, so I'm going to use some of this Harmony 543 because I've got about a half bag of that left. I need to order more than Nature Safe 55. 855 but this stuff here works pretty good so we're going to do about a half a scoop on these little rows for each row like this so no matter if we're planting flowers or nitrogen fixing crops like these english bees here we always put down some kind of pre-plant fertilizer in the furrow now, I probably should inoculate these English peas, but I don't have any inoculant. Just kind of realized that all of a sudden, but that's a good practice, too, if you've got some of that on hand. Just pin down. There we go. Let's see how this goes with all them okra roots in there. Uh oh, got twisted. We got a mess. Oh no. Kids been in here messing with. Oh lord. Let me see that. That says Titus Key all over it. Look at that. Hold on, I can't see you in the way. <laughs> it's so twisted. Okay, do you almost have the problem fixed? Yeah, I got it fixed now. Okay. It ain't gonna cover up this in the box, the back end of this row very well. It'll be all right. All right, so we got all our drip hooked up, except for this one little piece here. So I'll pull that little goof plug out of there. And we'll put this row start there. Back in that hole. And then we're going to turn this on just for a second to inflate these lines and cover them up for those ones over there. We don't need any more water. It's plenty wet. You can see our pretty flower transplants here. Some of them got a little burn on them. I think got a little too hot with fertilizer, but they should be just fine. And these bottom trays, these, um, I think this is called a maxi size, 
garden garland bottom tray are not only good for bottom watering these trays but i like them for transporting transplants so when i got a bunch of different stuff like this instead of hauling this thing down the road which doesn't slide very good along the soil and plucking them out as i'm planting sometimes i'll go ahead and pluck them all out lay them in here and then it makes it a little easier to plant you can see these giant marigold transplants those look pretty good there they probably could have been planted last week but it is what it is we'll get them in the ground today these things are huge they are really big are you going to break up the roots before you plant it or no, do you no we just stick them in the ground like this we might have enough for a whole row of those we That's might need to thinking. change our plan plan there okay okay so snapdragons look pretty rough snapdragons take forever to germinate wow. so now we want to get these calendula out of here and i don't know if we can pull those we got to be pretty careful Ooh, i think those. we got to poke those you got a pen no here i like to, i'll do it this way okay why are those so like that i don't know why these just don't seem to root as well uh -huh. They probably would if we left them keep going, but I think they'll be just fine if we put them in the ground. So These things pull out a little better if they're dry, but... Yeah. Uh, so your germination rate looks to be the best on the marigold. Yeah, yeah, I get better germination on the marigolds, always. You should have let them dry out for ease of transportation or because yeah, you don't yeah. think they're going to do well in the soil? They'll pull out trays better if they're dry. Oh, okay kind of hold together a little better so we'll probably I think we should do a whole row of marigolds and then we'll split a row with the uh, calendula and the bachelor button is that what these long yeah okay never grown bachelor button before what's it supposed to look like these are supposed to be like purple and dark blue oh, colors yeah, I think they're going to be nice. Are they tall or short? I don't know. Oh. I don't know. You're unclear about a lot of things here. But on most of the seed buyer sites, they don't call them Baxter Button. They call them Centauria, which is the scientific name. Maybe a little further apart. Oh, okay. So then more, so 18 inches. Yeah. Yeah, we want to make sure we got enough for the whole row. So pick it up? No, that's probably good. Mm -hmm. All right there. I don't know how big these giant ones are going to get. That's kind of why I'm doing a um, single row of them. Yeah, that looks good. You used to lay these out for me. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I mean, you say here. Oh, I'll show you exactly where to put yeah. them. Yeah. Now you're advancing in your gardening ways. You get to. Uh, I'm now in the advanced course, which means I have to estimate distances myself. Yeah, you get to space your own plants. That's, That's a true. big big step yeah i don't want to hear any lip from you then <laughs> any lip about them not being right <laughs> these flowers you can't really get it wrong i can't believe neither of our children want to help i don't blame them it is it's just toasty out here it went from being like low 70s earlier today to being it's it's the hottest 85 i've ever seen yeah this is not 85 this is solid 110 when you get to the real, real advanced level, you'll be able to look at how many transplants you got and space them just right. And then when you get to the end of the row, you won't have any left. What? But that is... Uh, that sounds like magic. Yeah, that's 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 advanced level stuff right yeah, there. You're trying to brag on yourself. No, I don't, I'm not always able to do that. Okay. Every now and then it works out and it's it's nice. Is that an okra root? That looks like a tree. Yeah, they are like trees. Yeah. I'm thinking we got time for these to make some nice fall colors before uh, a real hard frost probably will wipe them out. All right, that row looks great, honey. These babies here, you're going to have to be a lot more delicate with. Let's just start up here. Are they that far apart, though? You might can put those a little closer. Then you got a few oh more Lord. plants. These are going to be... Yeah, those are going to be a little bit of a pain. They're so tender and delicate. Right here? Yeah, that's probably good. Just don't put them so close together that we run out. Well, I can't tell. I know you keep expecting me to tell. I can't tell. We just got to kind of... No, no, no. I'm counting on you to tell. Just got to have a feel for it. 
Also, normally when we put in transplants like this, we usually are putting them near on top of the emitters. Mm. It is so wet, and I don't want to run any more water. We're just going to ignore the emitters for now. This plot here usually stays plenty moist, so um, once they get roots going, the roots will be close enough to a emitter, even if it's not right on top of it. It'll be good enough to keep these guys happy. All right, all right, all right. Brooklyn got our two rows of flowers in there. Looking good. Some of them are leaning a little bit. They probably don't like this humidity. Although you would think they'd be used to it being in the greenhouse. But I may have to just give them a little overhead splash later this evening until they get used to uh, this new soil here. But hopefully they'll all make it and uh, start growing fast. Who's hot, ain't it? Really hot. Okay, got our flowers in the ground. Now it's time for some English peas here. English peas, I said this one time, I'll say it a bunch of times. What are you gonna say? Something we grow every year, but something <laughs> doesn't always do great for us. Something we grow every year, and then every year we're like, we got less than a sandwich bag full. Yeah, we get a little <laughs> bit. We re rarely get a whole bunch enough to freeze. No, uh, you can't to, put them to up. Freeze. Mm -mm. Uh, we cook you them can. Once. One year I had enough to freeze, but uh, I don't remember just that. haven't lately. It, they like this kind of 70 degree weather, which it was like yesterday and then you know 85 or hotter today and sometimes down here we don't get a lot of in-between weather yeah. so it's a crap shoot on when to actually plant these things right. i'm just guessing i was trying to get them in middle of september with a couple days later than that but here we go okay i planted several different varieties over the years the most popular the one you find in the old feed and seed stores out there is called green arrow that's a decent variety <coughs> excuse me I've grown one called Mr. Big that I really, really, really like. Hmm. And uh, it makes some really nice big pods. Um, grew one called Sugar Prince that was just okay. Wasn't a huge fan of it. And then we're trying a new variety this fall. Got this one from Johnny's called PLS 595. PLS. What's that stand for? I have no idea. Pumpkin Spice Latte is what I was thinking of. Well, that would be PSL. Oh, oh sorry. Um... <laughs> I don't know what this stands for, and I don't know who the breeder is, but it's supposed to be a really good shelling pea, as they call it. Johnny's being up north, they don't call them English peas like we do down here. They just call them peas. But it's supposed to make some nice big pods, lots of peas in them. Okay. And this one's supposed to be really disease resistant. I think fusarium, downy mildew, powdery mildew. Um, seems like there was some other great uh attributes to it that made me want to try this variety so if it does stay hot for a little while these should be able to handle it disease wise it's hard to plant these things too thick so Good. i got a whole pound of them okay. we don't have to be exact let's make us some little mini furrows under that arch and throw these in the ground all right let's go all right so we got our tape buried there we're going to take our little single tine here and i kind of know where that tape is because it's right up against some poles I'm going to go out right here. I don't want to damage the tape, but I want to get close enough to it where the water will get it. We'll just make us a little mini furrow here. You do that with such precision. This is uh, very enjoyable to me. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Why? I don't know. It's just soothing. <laughs> soothing to pull this little thing through the dirt like this. I'm gonna go on the other side. Okay, I'll meet you there. Are you not worried about these old vines? I can't do nothing about them. Oh. Uh, I mean, I could spend half a day out here pulling them off. But that sounds like a horrible idea. Yeah, it does sound like a terrible idea. I tried to burn them. They won't burn. So they should stay there. So what did you see it saying on the package, honey? It says, do not thin. That means plant them thick. Okay, I know you say that, but I'm worried I'm not gonna like that thick. You think I need to get closer to the ground? Yeah, I think you need to get closer to the ground. Yeah, there you go. That I, I mean, two inches apart or thicker. Yeah, that's good. Is that an inch apart? In, in, yeah, that's fine. Fill up. These things don't germinate as great as some seeds, so um, we need to put them in there thick. Just don't use the whole bag till we get, make sure we got enough for all four rows. Yeah, that's about how thick 
we want to plant them there. dig some more sweet potatoes on this video but uh i don't think it's gonna happen i think no. we may dig some more sweet potatoes later today and we may video that but uh it is too hot out here i keep thinking hot. that we're done with the hot weather and uh just yeah. pops up out of nowhere now we are supposed to get down in the 50s this weekend at night it's like a huge deal for us you yeah. might as well call that 22 degrees it, it, it's going to feel like 20 degrees yeah. to us yeah. But uh, I think, I keep saying this, I think this is probably the last real hot day we've got by looking at the forecast. You said that every day. Yeah, and they just keep, the, the. it's not just my weather app, any weather app you use has been poorly, poorly accurate. <laughs> Including Travis. Yeah, I can't tell when it's going <laughs> to rain, uh, oh. if it's going to be hot or not. It felt great earlier today and now it's just almost suffocating out here. So it, is. it was good to get that stuff planted. <laughs> good to kind of stay on schedule all my that whole video you remember we did on our fall planting schedule yeah. i'm about three days to a week late on about everything uh, okay great but so you is. guys just adjust your schedules yeah but it is what it is we're doing the best we can got a lot of rain it's pushed us back a lot did you have some questions oh i was wondering i feel like when i grew up thinking about stuff growing that i thought you could just throw it out there in the ground and instead, we do a whole process. And I just want to know, is that process totally necessary for best benefits? Or is it just what you do? Could we just throw those peas in the ground, overhead water them? Uh, some things will germinate okay like that. Some things will not. We do okay. it. We, we space things out because we're wanting a consistent product. We're wanting all of our plants, all of the things that come from the plants to be all relatively the same mm. size. Okay. If you got stuff growing close together, it's not going it's going to grow right. smaller. Right. Now, around here, you'll see it if you ride down the road in people's backyards. People still do it. When they talk about a fall garden, what they talk about is I'm going to go till up a little spot about like that, 20 by 30. And I'm going to go to the seed and feed store and buy me a pound of mustard or a pound of collards. Yeah. And they just throw And I'm going to go out there mm -hmm. and I'm going to throw it there and I may run a rake over it. And that's my fall garden. Okay. And that's what a lot of people around here call a fall garden. You can yeah. do that with some things, just like we do with the cover crops. Yeah. No, I and get that. Some of those germinate well that way. The soybeans this year didn't germinate well that way. They like to be deeper in the ground. Yeah. So. I don't mean literally just throw them. I mean the whole process of the drip tape and the fertilizer and all that. Well, the drip tape just makes things easier and conserve, Free. Okay. Well, it conserves water too. Okay. We run an overhead sprinkler on that. We're using a lot more water than if we just turn on that tape. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So it's so a little more work up front, mm. but uh, it saves me a lot of time coming out here and making sure everything's got ample water. Okay, understood. You know, and, and, and thankfully we already had the trellis there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we or else we had to put up, work. We yeah. had to put up a trellis. So yeah, yeah. There's a planting is is one of the more laborious parts of this journey, but uh, <laughs> oh. once you got it done, you got it done. You got just wait on the germinate. Okay. So. So thank you for joining us for the planting today. If you've got a go-to or really good English pea variety, I'd love to hear about it. Uh, we keep trying different ones because we're not that great at growing English peas down here. But like I mentioned, of the ones I've tried, the Mr. Big is probably my favorite. We'll see how this uh, PLS, is it 595? I just got consumed on thinking it was pumpkin spice latte. Yeah, not but, uh, didn't keep so up with PLS them. 595. We'll see how that one does compared to... Uh, <laughs> To what we remember historically about Mr. Big, but tell us what your favorite English pea variety is. And if you did enjoy this video, make sure to subscribe, ring the bell, like, and share. And we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm. Well, mm -hmm, by the beauty of your life.